Welcome to Seavine, We the People. Today we have some very special guests. We have with us today our everyday person that we have been trying to get back on for the longest time, Leonard Bacani. I finally talked him into it. And uh, that's only because I'm having his, his sensei on, the one where he got his black belt. So he figured he better show up. So and with that would be John Gabriel. John Gabriel is the owner of the West Coast Krav Maga Studios um, in the Southern California area. And um, he has been going through what a lot of business owners are going through. And that's what we are gonna be discussing today um, from two different perspectives, a couple of different perspectives. So welcome John and Leonard. Thank you. <laughs> well, John, you, how long has your businesses been open? Um, we opened up in Temecula about 22 years ago, 1998, when we moved over from Rhode Island. From Rhode Island? So you changed it to West Coast then, right? West Coast, yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know, it's West Coast, Krav Maga. And uh, how long has Leonard been one of your students there? Oh, I figure since he was, what, three years old, Leonard? Yeah, so. <laughs> the past probably seven or eight years. A uh, long time. <laughs> And um, also, from what I understand, Leonard uh, also assists you in instructing law enforcement officers in Krav Maga also, correct? Mm -hmm. And those of us that are new here, uh, Leonard's background is he was a police officer for, I don't know, what was it? How many yeah. years? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it was about, I, was, I think, 15 years, or was yeah. it longer than that? Yeah. yeah, with uh, I'm going from memory here with Santa Ana Police Department, and then um, he was stabbed uh, while on duty, and you know trying to help a mother, and uh, so he received a Purple Heart, and he was medically retired, and um, he now has his own um, uh, investment investigations agency. Uh, maybe I should let you tell this because I'm going from memory. Go ahead. After I retired, the Homeland Security Services, which is a private investigation, private security, and we're a state authorized training facility. So um, you and John work together fairly closely in a lot of different things, correct? Yeah. Okay, with that going on, um, I know John, because uh, Leonard was there filming him, has been at uh, a couple of different rallies in um, not too happy with the businesses being shut down here in Southern California. In fact, it's uh, absolutely ridiculous what is going on. And so John had some, um, he, had, he was one of the chosen speakers to be able to speak at this. So John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened at that rally, what you heard, and what you said. Well, to be honest, it was the first time I've ever uh, spoke out. And I realized that, especially in these times here, we need to get our voices heard. Uh, and it was a, a really uh, nerve wracking that day, you know, being out there in front of people and expressing my true feelings of what's going on, which is against uh, um, some of what our government kind of wants us, or at least the government is, uh, in this state. So it was kind of, it was a hell of an experience for me, to be honest with you. Um, but let me tell you, when we first closed down, I had a very, very hard time. I, I, owned, I owned my own business ever since I was 23 years old. And, and I, thank God we live in this country that we're able to do that. And um, I didn't want to close down. I didn't want to close down. But uh, I realized that, you know, if this thing is true, what we've been hearing, I got to join up with everybody else and try to put this thing behind us. And so, uh, so I did close down. And... And like, and Linda, like I said that day, I felt like I let myself down. I, I know I shouldn't feel this way, but I felt like I, I let myself down, I let my wife down, my kids, my members. I felt like, like really depressed when we shut down, especially being shut down for, what, two, three months. It was crazy, crazy times. And then you, um, I, I think uh, everybody was allowed to open up uh, to a certain degree because uh, not everybody's from California, they're from all over. So why don't you tell exactly what happened? Well, we were allowed to open up again. Um, I, well, yeah, we opened up a couple of weeks before we were supposed to, to be honest, because I needed to, I needed to get people in here. Um, I have quite a few of my members that wanted to train. Um, of course, they wanted to be safe, 
but they wanted to train a lot. Of, uh, we, we converted, uh, we actually had to learn a whole new platform of learn of, of teaching, teaching uh, online, like kind of like what we're doing right here with the screen. And it's a whole new ball game. And I'm sure a lot of teachers, uh, school teachers right now are, um, are experiencing that. So we, we, we transitioned within two days to nine classes a day online. Uh, so we offered that for our members, but we opened up uh, and then we were um, supposed to shut down again. And then we got some, uh, we, we got some um, ruling that we can, can uh, open up again outside, which in 90, 100 degree weather, opening up outside is kind of, uh, it's kind of ridiculous to be honest, especially here in my Marietta school, we got, uh, we got asphalt and you see, you know, asphalt with the sun, you can't touch it. So it's pretty tough to work out outside. We will open up, you can see the big garage doors in the back. We got these big fans up here, doors open, got a big cross breeze in here. So um, we stayed open uh, inside. And um, we had to accommodate as many members as we can. It's, but we still got a lot of members that are um, that are um, online. We still got our virtual classes to accommodate them that are still uh, don't feel comfortable going out in public. Well, that's understandable. Um, Leonard, since you are at uh, both ends of the spectrum here, not only being a client, but also an instructor, uh, the online version of things, what is your take on that? Well, they have the opportunity, like John said, to to learn the techniques online. Uh, they usually have two instructors instructing the uh, students who are present, and then they have an online instructor instructing uh, simultaneously uh, the uh, students who are online. Uh, as far as this uh, uh, modified uh, uh, opening, uh, the students are free to wear masks, uh, and some of them do. Uh, they're not comfortable yet uh, totally going without masks so they have the opportunity to do that i do know that uh before and after uh, uh each session it scrubbing down the mats and, and stuff like that so uh it, it's an adjustment um i i participated in a little bit of the uh, online stuff but it, it's more um realistic and you learn better actually physically being there so that's You're my slamming point. people around on the mat yeah that's all I can... <laughs> I love watching you guys, the guys and girls there. Well, you know what? Um, what you said is true also, John, that uh, I know that you have purposely held back and kept silent for a lot of reasons on what your viewpoints were. And when, when you were speaking out at that rally, that told me that this is a guy that's got some major things building up and had to get it out there. And so... Um, let's just, let's just get it out there. What do you think? What, just repeat what you said, what needs to happen and know that other business owners and so on are listening to you. And, you know, we just need to need, we need to band together, quite frankly, and to work together to get our country back. And that's what I feel has happened is there is overreach. There's a thing about being careful. There's a thing about, um, you know, doing what you need to do to flatten the curve, which was going to be initially what, <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks. So, you know, with this overreach, what do you do? What, where are you at in your thinking right now? Well, we, we have to stay open. We, I got to stay open. We have to continue to continue. We have to continue. You know, when we turn to virtual classes, like, you know, Leonard was saying, there's only so much you can do virtual, uh, virtually. Um, we had members that, you know, some of our members, uh, a lot of our members, to be honest, with you, they, they, they uh, put their memberships on hold or quit totally altogether. Right now we're down. We lost 60% of our income, 60% of our members. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I got three locations and we'll probably talk a little bit later on about uh, what, uh, what the, the bills that we have and how much uh, they're, they're not really working with us too, too much. But, you know, we, we got to stay open. I got so many members that, that supported us online, but how long can you train online? One, two, three, four, five months. We're, we're going into six months now. And a lot of them are saying, John, you know, we, we did what we can and, but there's a big scare out there still uh, of that. We're going to die if we come down to your school and we don't feel comfortable and they're dropping out still. And so we're having the biggest, to be honest, we have the biggest drop offs now than we ever did. Because it's it's continuing too long, it's it's mm -hmm. it down or scaring people way too long, you know. And 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 what's what's really not right is it's not fair. 
it, you know, if things were fair to everybody, that's fine, but it's not fair. Uh, you know, I, we, we go shopping to these big chains and I, I go, I don't want to go there to be, be honest with you, but you go to, to these big chains and yeah, you, you know, you have to wear a mask sometimes. You don't have to wear a mask sometimes. Uh, there's six foot rule, but nobody abides by it. Everybody's touching everything. And, and, and you're, even, you're so close to the cashier that there's a, a plate there, but they go around the plate to talk to you because they can't hear you. So it's kind of a joke, to be honest with you. And then, you know, you can do all that, but we can't do here, like what Leonard was saying. We, we scrub the mats, wipe the pads, we cut our class times down so we can, can sanitize and get everything ready. It's safe. It's safe, you know, and, and, and it's just not right. It, it's not fair. It's not right. And, and, and we, we, we got we to gotta push through. And what's awesome is, there's a lot of other people in my boat that, uh, that are speaking out too. And it makes you feel good when you see other people banding together, sticking together with the same, same mindset. Well, it, I think you hit the nail on the head that there are plenty of small businesses. In fact, it's for the most part in most states, anywhere between 80 to 90 plus percent of businesses are small businesses. And to have just the very small percentage of large businesses and you follow X amount of rules for safety or whatever, you can do the same thing in a small yeah, business you can, and, and be able to keep the economy open. That, that right there is what's telling me this is all a sham. It's a sham. I said it. It's a sham. Okay, I'm not saying that the uh, virus isn't real. It most mm -hmm. certainly is. But they are doing what they have been doing so many times with so many other things, and I'm talking about a certain left side of the aisle, that are doing overreach, overregulation, over everything, to such a degree that it's literally deadly in a lot of different ways, not only emotionally, but to the, the economy and everything else is going on because of the overreach. What do we do? Do we just sit here and complain about it? What do we do? Wait till November 3rd? Are we gonna be able to? You know, I mean, a lot of, a lot of friends, man, I, I've been in this industry, like I said, for a long, long time. And I have a lot of friends that are, they're, they're calling me up and said, John, I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm sh I have to close my, my doors down. A lot of good, strong schools shutting their businesses down. That, that, you know, you get thousands of, of people in, in a lifetime that are a, a good school um, affects families and, and does good things for their community. And there's only so much time or so many months that a small business can, can survive uh, on, on savings and, and basically savings, basic savings. You know, and it, it's, it, it, it's really, it, it's really, it sucks. It really sucks, you know. Um, right now, we're getting a lot of people coming back. Not a lot of people, but the people that are coming back, they need their kids to be around other kids. Adults need to be around other adults. And um, we've got a couple of our kids here at our school that, uh, that committed, that, that actually tried to commit suicide. It wasn't for the parents catching them they'd probably be dead right now. And the parents are bringing them in here so they can have that relationship with kids. And, and mainly their teenage boys are the ones that are really struggling uh, uh, with this. So, I mean, we are, you know, this, you know, these small businesses really connect with people and we, our society needs that. It needs that. Right now they're doing, it, it, never mind talking about the school, all the kids are in, um, they're, they're in front of their computer like what we're doing for four, five, six hours a day. That's gonna kill our kids, man. It's gonna, it's, it's going to kill our kids. They need that interaction with other people. So well, when not they only physically, but mentally, emotionally, it's, yeah. you know, one thing that you do, John, is uh, I, that always impressed me about your school and, and a lot of schools to do this also is working together as family with family and, uh, you know, teaching morals and ethics and, and all that you do, it's like the family environment, the cohesiveness is being destroyed also. The masks are taking away identities where you, you can't even uh, look at somebody in the face and associate with them. It's, it's all coming down. Um, Leonard told me something and I will let him repeat it that uh, he witnessed something about what some of the kids are being taught by their parents. Uh, well, 
it was an observation. It was a police officer. I actually witnessed it. Uh, uh, a father and, and his two, or actually three young uh, daughters uh, in tow. Um, they walked by the police officer and the last one, the youngest one said, I hate cops. And so that really shocked me. It uh, actually ruined my whole day. But uh, to where are we in a society now where we teach our kids that uh, the protectors of our society are the enemies? So uh, it, it was shocking. Um, it's, a, it's a wake up call, actually. It, yeah, because I remember when I was a little girl, my mom used to tell me, and it's like, Linda, if you ever get in trouble, you know, and you're not at home, always look for a police officer because they'll be there to help you. And so, you know, that's the way I grew up. You know, what is going on right now? Uh, the big thing was initially when there were these school shootings is they wanted to get rid of all of the weapons and et cetera. And they said, well, we have police officers to protect us. We have people that are trained. And that all makes kind of sense, except <laughs> as you watch thing moves, move, things move along and they're very subtle and slow that maybe they think we don't remember back. Now they're trying to defund the police. So right. uh, it's, it's not making any sense. The people that want to take away our guns, it's the same people uh, who want to defund the police and uh, are now saying that we don't want police officers at all. Uh, in the, in the, not just in the campuses and schools, but just uh, in, in society, they want to replace them with social workers. Uh, what, if a, uh, 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 what if the incident escalates to a deadly situation where you have an assaulted uh, subject who uh, needs to be neutralized. I, I, uh, I just would hate to, uh, you know, fathom what, what can happen if that happens. So my take on it is that they want to defund the, poli the police, the traditional police, uh, for the purposes of installing their own police so that they can enforce their laws, the laws that, uh, that go with their narrative. So I think that's what this is all about. It is what it's about, and that's already happened in Australia. We have a number of Seavine members in Australia, and um, I won't even get into that, but um, that's already happened. That's already happened. They've intimidated a lot of the good officers to quit, and they're being replaced by individuals that are easy to puppet. Well, and I can, Linda, that I can for my business, we are state authorized training facility. We train uh, and certify those going into the security business. They have to have guard licenses and, and firearms permits. And my agency does that. I, I can tell you that we have seen a very steep uptick in police officers leaving early and going into security business. I know because uh, we have to certify, we have to train and certify them. We have seen a, a steady increase since this whole started, uh, people, uh, the uh, police officers now, they're retiring, you know, two, three, up to five years early. Uh, and they're throwing their hands up and saying it's not worth it. Okay, so what's the answer? Good question. It's, uh, well, uh, it, I mean, you want to follow the law, but when the laws are being made by, you know, okay, that, that's a path we don't really want to go down. But <laughs> there, there is a little bit of hope, and I'm going to have to be careful how I say this. Yesterday at the RNC, um, President Trump was saying that uh, we the people are warriors, and warriors have to learn how to be patient. And so that tells me one thing. And then there was another thing I noticed, and some of you will get this, some of you won't. But on one side of the stage, there was 17 flags. And on the other side of the stage, there were 17 flags. And we all know what number in the alphabet that says. So um, I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes. We just have to hope and pray that mm -hmm. that is the case. Because I don't know how much longer people are gonna take this. So um, November 3rd is going to be very interesting. Um, if you've never gone out to vote before, 
go out to vote now. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I was going to bring up to you, John, I don't know if you saw the text message I saw you, but there was a gym owner in another state that was going through it even worse than you were, that he was charged $5,000 a day because he decided to stay open um, as a fine. And so what he did is he turned his gym into a campaign office. And um, so all the people that come there and do the campaigning and everything, they have the workout equipment, they can use the equipment, you know, volunteer their time. And um, so I was just throwing that out there. I know you in the past have done polls, but I know that's just what, one day. And uh, this could be an ongoing thing. Um, it's just something to consider. I was going to throw that out there. Yeah, I did see it. I'm going to start researching that, to be honest with you, because you never know what's going to be happening, what they're going to do. Yeah, that's true. But it's just something to think about. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd help you campaign. <laughs> so, anywho, everybody, thank you for joining us today. I would like to have the three of us back, because there are many more things that you both have unique opportunity to be a you know, privilege to to see and so let's let's go ahead and continue these discussions on future shows thank you Linda okay. have a good day everyone I know all right